If you're currently taking either of the NAD Plus boosters, NMN or NR, then it's absolutely essential that you're also taking TMG concurrently. In this video, as well as looking at why that's so, we're also going to be looking at the many amazing health benefits of TMG, the optimal dosage, any potential side effects, and my recommended TMG products. But first, let's take a look at what TMG actually is and how it works in the body. TMG is simply an abbreviation for trimethylglycine, and structurally, it's the amino acid glycine with three methyl groups attached. It's also commonly known as betaine, which can be a little confusing, but here's the reason for it. Betaine is actually a category of molecules. Because TMG was the first dietary betaine discovered, from beetroot as it happens, the terms trimethylglycine and betaine ended up being used interchangeably. TMG plays a highly important role in the body as a methyl donor, and it does so by either of two mechanisms. Firstly, it can donate a methyl group to reduce homocysteine into L-methionine. Secondly, it can increase levels of SAMe or folate molecules, both of which can then go on to donate methyl groups to wherever they're required in the body, thereby supporting whole body methylation. I'll now explain why this role as a methyl donor is so important in just a minute when we get to the TMG benefits section of this presentation. TMG's other major mechanism is that it functions as an osmolite which simply means that it's a molecule that's shuttled in and out of cells in order to affect their hydration status, thereby regulating water balance in the cells. So when we have increased intracellular concentrations of TMG, this promotes cell hydration and increases resistance to stress factors. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, also known as NMN, and nicotinamide riboside, also known as NR, are currently the top two NAD plus boosting supplements. Now we know that it's highly advantageous to maintain our NAD plus levels as we age, especially since NAD is required for the proper functioning of our sirtuins, often referred to as the longevity genes. Unfortunately, however, our NAD plus levels naturally decline with age, and this can be directly correlated with our age-related physical and mental decline. Now, although NMN and NR can indeed top up those declining NAD plus levels, there is still one potential issue that remains, and that relates to methylation. Methylation is a fundamental biochemical process in which one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms are transferred from one molecule to another. And it's responsible for many of the body's most important functions, including DNA expression, cell division, metabolism, cellular energy production, and the forming of neurotransmitters. Now the issue we need to address is that NMN and NR could in theory potentially deplete our methyl pool since methyl groups are required by both the NAD boosters when converting into NAD+. And that's where TMG comes to the rescue. Since TMG is a methyl donor, it's able to replenish those diminishing methyl groups used up in the conversion of NMN into NAD+. So supplementing with TMG is a simple way to counter this depletion. Now lastly in the subject of NAD+, I'd just like to mention another supplement that can effectively maintain NAD plus levels, but works through a totally different pathway, and that's Apigenin. Now you can find out all you need to know about this product, including a more detailed explanation of NAD plus and the sirtuins, by watching my recent Apigenin video. Studies have consistently found that supplementation with TMG can reliably reduce elevated blood levels of the amino acid homocysteine and it does through the process of remethylation. Now this is a very good thing, since lower homocysteine levels correlate with a lower risk of stroke and heart disease. And conversely, high levels of homocysteine can cause the arteries to get clogged and harden, and it's associated with an increased risk of both cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events. By lowering homocysteine, it's been shown to improve the mitochondrial membrane, protecting cells from oxidative stress and inflammation. Now interestingly, high homocysteine levels have also been linked to Alzheimer's disease, so keeping levels in check may be an essential strategy in the avoidance of dementia in later life. One word of warning, however. At very high dosages, and by that I'm referring to anything over 10 grams per day, TMG may increase both total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, which could potentially cancel out its cardioprotective benefits. However, at the daily dosages that I'm going to be suggesting later in the presentation, there are no such risks. And lastly, I should point out that in addition to TMG, the remethylation of homocysteine also requires the cofactors folic acid, vitamin B6, vitamin B12 and zinc. So it's obviously important to ensure that your diet is not lacking in any of those. 
increasing rates of diabetes is a global problem. So it's interesting to note that those individuals with lower TMG levels are more likely to have insulin resistance, while higher TMG blood levels are associated with improved insulin sensitivity. Backing this up is a randomized controlled trial involving 3,000 men and women, which found that those with lower TMG levels were more likely to have diabetes. However, after two years of lifestyle changes, the resulting higher TMG levels were associated with lower diabetes rates. What we do know is that higher TMG levels improve glucose tolerance, maintain glucose balance, and improve insulin sensitivity. And those are the pathways by which TMG can reduce the incidence of diabetes. Although our liver does retain some fat as an energy reserve, too much can cause what's known as fatty liver disease. And it's yet another emerging global health problem. The excessive buildup of fat in the liver can be caused by such things as obesity, diabetes, and alcohol abuse. However, TMG has been proven to help break down those excess fatty acids. In fact, there's even been cases of patients with liver damage recovering following the prolonged use of TMG. In my opinion, this one property of TMG alone would be a good enough reason for many to justify using this supplement. I'm sure that many of you watching are familiar with the health supplement SAMe, short for s methionine. It's naturally produced by our body and participates in millions of biochemical reactions every day. Unfortunately, however, SAMe levels do decrease as we age. Now, when taken in supplement form, it's often used to alleviate symptoms of anxiety and depression. So it's interesting to learn that TMG actually increases the body's levels of SAMe, which in turn helps produce serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. As a result, supporting neurotransmitter balance and promoting good mental health. Those of you who exercise regularly may already know that TMG is a common ingredient in many workout supplements, and there might be good reason for that. Several studies have found that TMG supplementation can enhance resistance exercise performance, specifically in protocols that challenge muscular endurance with high levels of metabolic stress. TMG can potentially increase the number of repetitions performed while engaged in moderate to high rep, high volume training, resulting in an increase in strength over time. And by high volume, I'm referring to at least four sets or above per exercise. It should be noted that TMG doesn't seem to enhance resistance exercise performance where low volumes are concerned. And by that, I'm referring to anything in the range of one to three sets per exercise performed with low rep ranges. Now, the mechanism by which TMG improves exercise performance still remains unclear. But if I had to make an educated guess, then I'd say it's likely due to TMG's ability to attenuate increases in lactate levels. Firstly, let me be clear that there's no free ride here, and that any improvement in body composition while taking TMG will only take place in combination with exercise. There's very unlikely to be any change in body composition from supplementing with TMG alone. What we're looking at here are positive changes experienced while using TMG over and above what would be attained as a result of exercise alone. A double-blind randomized controlled trial involving 23 experienced strength-trained men looked at the effects of six weeks of TMG supplementation while participating in a resistance training program. The men taking TMG experienced a greater increase in lean mass and a greater concurrent decrease in body fat compared to those not taking the supplement. In another smaller randomized controlled trial involving 12 trained men, TMG supplementation alongside exercise sessions resulted in decreased cortisol levels and increased growth hormone levels. An increase in muscle protein synthesis is what is thought to have caused a slight increase in lean mass. Although to be fair, considering the small size of these studies, I'd suggest that further larger scale trials are really what's needed to confirm these effects. Several studies show a link between TMG intake and prevention of several cancers, including pancreatic, breast, and lung cancer. In a meta-analysis of 14 trials, high TMG consumption was found to lower the risk of developing cancer. While another study involving 1,500 breast cancer patients found that high dietary intake of TMG was associated with an increased chance of survival. After reviewing the available data, my suggestion regarding the optimal TMG dosage is as follows. I would suggest a minimum daily intake in supplement form of one gram and a maximum daily intake of three grams. At these dosages, you will essentially be reaping most of the benefits with practically zero risk of negative side effects. 
Now the reason why I'm suggesting capping the maximum at three grams is because taking more is unlikely to provide additional benefits in a healthy individual. Additionally, at this dosage, there's absolutely no risk of increasing your total cholesterol or your LDL cholesterol levels. And also, like any osmolite, TMG can cause diarrhea at high dosages, but there should be no such worries when the dosage is capped as suggested. I'm 62 and I take 2 grams daily of TMG, which is exactly double my daily NMN intake of 1 gram. And this dosage should effectively ensure that my metal pool is in no way compromised. Now it is quite possible that a lower TMG dosage of 1 gram daily might well be sufficient for a younger individual taking 1 gram of NMN daily especially if that person is also consuming a diet rich in TMG containing foods. Now, if you're wondering about NMN dosages, one gram is considered a suitable daily dosage for most people. However, a small percentage of users would appear to take more, some as much as two grams daily. In addition to NMN, I also take the supplement Apigenin, which also increases my NAD plus levels, but through a totally different pathway. So for me to use more than one gram daily of NMN would likely be overkill. Now if you are taking NMN but not taking Apigenin concurrently as I do, then I suggest that you seriously consider it. And if that's got your interest, then you can find all you need to know about this remarkable supplement by watching my recent Apigenin video. And if you're one of those taking the higher NMN dosages, then I can see no issue with taking TMG up to the 3 gram daily cap, but not more. TMG can be taken with or without food. However, for anyone who is particularly susceptible to stomach upsets, then I'd suggest best take with food. Now, TMG is a relatively long half-life of around 14 hours, so it's really up to you whether you prefer to split your dosage or take it all at once. Most TMG supplements come in 500mg capsules, so it's pretty easy to go either route. The following side effects are dose dependent, and of course, some individuals are more susceptible than others. The most common side effects associated with TMG supplementation are digestive issues, and these can include diarrhea, indigestion, bloating, cramps, nausea, and vomiting. But let me just clarify that these side effects are highly unlikely at the dosages suggested previously. At very high dosages, and I'm talking in the region of 8 to 10 grams upwards, there may be a resultant rather unpleasant fishy body odor that may result in some people. Sweating and salivation may also occur as the body tries to rid itself of excess TMG. And as already mentioned, extreme dosages carry a risk of elevating your total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels. And lastly, as always, pregnant or nursing mothers, children under the age of 18, and individuals with a known medical condition should consult a physician before using TMG or indeed any new health supplement. Where TMG is concerned, I recommend either using filler-free capsules or a pure powder product. Additionally, irrespective of the brand, the product should preferably be independently lab tested. There are currently only two products that meet my requirements. First, we have a powder version from the brand Life Extension. It contains only pure powder, no fillers. And although they don't provide lab test data, it is a brand that I generally trust for quality and purity. Now, if you're wondering what TMG tastes like, it's not unpleasant. It's a somewhat sweet taste. Of course, using the powder version of supplements is not for everyone. So thankfully, we have an independently lab-tested filler-free capsule product from Do Not Age. In fact, this was the only brand I could find that offered a filler-free capsule TMG product. And it's the one that I'm currently using. Now, Do Not Age have very kindly provided viewers of this video with a 10% discount code. And I'm told that this will work with any product in their range. The Life Extension powder product comes in a 50 gram pack size with a 500 milligram serving scoop inside. While the Do Not Age product is available in a 60 or 366 capsule pack. Now I'm pretty sure that you won't find a better option than these two TMG products. So my advice is to simply go for whichever one suits your needs best. Many thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this presentation, then perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the channel. You'll have my instant love and gratitude, plus you'll be notified of all future uploads. And lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.